Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name's Rob Burgess. Uh, I'm the European Service Manager for a company called TCS John Huxley. I can't promise that my presentation is going to be as dynamic as Nicola's this morning, um, but I'll try and keep you all awake for the 20 minutes, half an hour that I'll be speaking. If anybody has any questions as we're going through, please uh, feel free to ask them. Um, alternatively, I'll be around uh, drinking some of Paul's beer and wine later, so uh, I'll be more than happy to answer anything then. Okay, so who are TCS John Huxley? So TCS John Huxley is a global leader in the provision of uh, casino equipment. So what we do is, uh, from our manufacturing facility in Stoke-on-Trent, we actually make probably 70% of the world's casino wheels in Stoke-on-Trent. So we have a Nevada gaming license in Stoke-on-Trent, which is unbelievable, really. Um, and we... Predominantly we make wheels, we make uh, chipping machines, we make tables. So anything that goes into a casino uh, as a traditional product, we make. As a service business, we service those products that we, we make um, across the globe. We also service on behalf of other customers. So we service a lot of electronic products that we don't necessarily manufacture ourselves on behalf of other manufacturers. So, what were the project goals um, when I looked at uh, MPL Systems? For me, um, what I looked at is, when I first joined TCS, which is only three years ago, everything was managed by Excel. Everything was managed by uh, telephone call. So when an engineer completed something, they rang up and said, I've just done this job. Somebody then updated the spreadsheet. There was no analytics, there was no reporting. Um, so what I was looking for as a solution was something that was out of the box. I didn't want something that was bespoke to TCS. But at the same time, I wanted something that I could customise to deliver what I wanted. I think most people who run a service operation want something slightly different, but fundamentally, everybody wants the same. They want to know where the engineers are spending the time, where you're putting your materials, and how profitable them contracts are, which is driven by the first two. I, I don't think anything's more, more uh, technical than that. So the key thing for me really was meaningful reports and uh, Nicola touched on it this morning for the people who are a, a contact centre based, it, it's all about data. You want to know, uh, and it's a line that Paul likes, to, uh, likes me to say, is which moles you need to whack. You need to understand from your business, from your data, where you need to focus your efforts to get the best results. Um, and for me, the meaningful reports and gathering that data uh, does it for me. Because it's important to know where the problem is, how you're going to manage it, and then how that can then change your strategy as a business to focus in the right areas. Whether it be, um, you'll see in a bit about improving our first time fix rate, which is something from a, a call centre uh, perspective you'd want to do as well. But we now analyse the components that we're having to order that the engineers don't have and changing then the boot stocks that the engineers have so they carry those components. And we've improved our first time fix rate considerably just by doing simple exercises like that because we know what parts engineers are using. Um, it was about end-to-end -end visibility. So improving the customer sat satisfaction and effective workforce planning. So have we got the right people in the right places at the right time? Um, and also, can we use this tool to measure our customer satisfaction and then try and understand where the dissatisfaction is coming from to then turn that into positives going forward? Um, we have mobile applications, so the job details and real-time updates. And we'll, I'll, I'll touch on that in a bit of how the system actually works. Um, but we also have equipment details and job history. So when an engineer goes to a job, it actually tells him the previous five times that an engineer has been to that piece of equipment and the interaction they've done, whether it was be maintenance, whether it be a reactive call, whether any parts were used, how long they spent on that, on that call, etc. Um, we have a customer portal, uh, which the, going back to uh, what was said earlier around making things easier for a customer, instead of the customer call in a call center, they now have the opportunity to log this direct onto, onto a, a web application, which then automatically gets dispatched to the engineer. What we find with that is we get better quality information because it's not going through a third party. It's coming direct from the customer. And then moving on for the future is uh, advanced job scheduling. So automated scheduling of jobs, maintenance, um, just to make sure that um, everything that we do is optimised and is as efficient as it possibly can be. 
So, as I mentioned before, what I wanted is an out-of-the-box end-to-end uh, -end solution, um, which can be moulded around our existing processes, but then also be flexible enough that as we develop as a company, as we, as we grow, um, it's big enough to grow with us and flexible enough for that. So, as I mentioned, we've got the customer online portal. We have advanced scheduling of the jobs. We have the engineer uh, system, which um, at the same time we gave all the engineers a new tablet device, a HP Elite Pad. Um, which allows us to run what we've classed as our GEMS, our Global Engineers Management System application. All of that information is stored in, in, into this uh, portal, which then allows us to run meaningful reports and allows me to run my business a lot more efficient and effectively. So what we've done is we've got accurate data uh, for first time fix rate, uh, awaited callback rate, so how many times are we going to a particular piece of equipment in a particular time scale, which then allows us to then uh, run alerts. So if we have something called a rogue and rebel report, so if a piece of equipment breaks down twice in a week or three times in a month, it, an automated report gets sent to my technical specialist so they can put a focus on that to make sure that we've not got a piece of equipment that's continuously breaking down. We get to the root cause of the issue when we fix it. Uh, parts usage and spend, uh, right the way down to machine level. So each piece of equipment serialized and we can go down to each uh, individual piece of equipment and see how much time and material and engineers spent on it. At the same time, I can roll it up to a site. At the same time, I can roll it up to a customer. At the same time, I can roll it up to the whole service department, um, which is linked to the parts and then obviously the time. Maintenance completion um, and average maintenance time. So has somebody got a very high call rate but a high maintenance completion rate because they're not spending enough time on maintenance. They're going around just wiping things down, closing them, which is generating calls. So a lot of these metrics link together to get a picture of where I believe the engineer should be. So how much time should they should be spending servicing a particular amount of equipment to then allow them to have a very low callback rate. Now that doesn't always work. You know, it's, it's not pure mathematics, but it's a good gauge of where we need to be as a business. And then I can target the engineers via the appraisals and via a, a bonus system which we're looking at putting into the engineers now to make them as efficient as they possibly can be. Identify repeat call outs, as I said before, um, with the Rogue and Rebel report, uh, root cause analysis and uh, the preventative maintenance side. So every time we do maintenance, it's recorded, it's logged. It's not on an Excel spreadsheet. I can run a report today that will tell me where we are with our maintenance completion for this period. I know that I have other exception reports that run that say uh, outstanding maintenance. I can schedule those reports, so if I wanted to, I could get a report every morning that said, these are the maintenances that were completed yesterday, these are the ones that are still outstanding for the period. Uh, and here's, here's some typical uh, information that we have. So we, we, we have graphical representation. Anyone who was in John's before, we've got pivot tables running in some of our reports that generate graphs. Um, we have a weekly operations report, which just shows some key metrics and then just has a data validation that shows red, amber, green. So again, these, any red on there are the moles that I need to whack, as opposed to looking at everybody and saying, you know, where do I focus my efforts? Okay, moving on. So the mobile app, um, as I said, we've called it GEMS. Um, it's a custom app application on a, a tablet device. It works offline, which was key for us, um, albeit most casinos now um, are, ha are, have Wi-Fi. Historically, and, and still now, uh, they're not generally on the main streets. You know, they could be downstairs, they could be in uh, the, the depths of buildings where telephone signal isn't always very good. Um, so the key for us was having something that works offline, that when the engineer then gets connected to Wi-Fi again, all that information that he has gets updated in real time so that all the reporting that we do is accurate because it all comes back to the data. And if the data is not accurate, then it's not worth having the system. Um, we manage our SLAs through there. So, I mean, there's a screenshot there, but um, anything that's red, in essence, we're outside of our agreed SLA. Um, we have the equipment details and job history, as I mentioned previously, and we do our parts management through there. So we order our parts, we consume our parts. So when we get a report, we get a total report of our uh, efficiency of our department. <coughs> the online portal. Um, 
It's immediate access to request a service. It's web-based. So each of our customers and our call center, everybody uses the same system. If I want to log a call now, I just log onto the portal. Um, and it's exactly the same system for everybody. Everyone logs into the, into the same place. It's easy, it's intuitive. Um, and to raise a job for a call out for an engineer literally takes 30 seconds. There's mandatory fields in here that somebody needs to fill in if they don't put the serial number down or don't choose the correct site location. Um, then it won't let them. It'll say, you know, you need to complete this field. Um, once that job is saved, it then automatically gets distributed to the engineer who is on a rotor in that area where that casino is. So within the, within the portal, we store our rotor information for the engineers. So um, in essence, the system knows who is on rotor in that area. If there's two engineers, it sends them to both. As soon as one engineer accepts it, it deletes that from the other engineer's uh, tablet. So it's quite a, a simple, um, intuitive system uh, that works very, very well. It's integrated. Again, a customer logs a call on the portal. They can go back into the portal and see what the status is. So we have uh, status new, uh, engineer received, engineer en route, engineer arrived, part delivered, uh, part ordered, part delivered. So if a customer comes in today, machine's off, logs a call, comes in the next day, and it's not on, he thinks the engineer's not been, Historically, another call to the call center saying, I've got this machine, it's down, everything else. Simply logs into the portal. He'll see when the engineer arrived, who it was, what the status is. So it could be part, part ordered or whatever. They can see the status. They can then get updates of real-time updates if the engineer is re-attending and things like that. So the project outcomes so far. Um, obviously, I've got my end-to-end -end, uh, visibility um, and end-to-end -end service delivery. I've got my reporting. The biggest part for me was is understanding where the business was, knowing where I wanted it to go to and getting there. Um, we've improved our equipment availability from 99%, which was already very high, to just over 99.5. Uh, accurate and relevant reports to enable better decision making. Our first time fix rate, as I said before, uh, it's improved. Originally, it was mid 60s. We got it up to 79. We're now at 85%. Um, I think we'll probably struggle to get it over 90 because some of the equipment that we have in the field is very expensive. So we have servers that are worth 25,000 pounds. We don't want them in engineers' boots. Um, we'll keep them under lock and key in Stoke and we'll deliver them AM delivery the next day. So I, d I, don't, I don't think we'll ever get to 100%, but you'll see that we've made considerable uh, inroads um, with, with a key metric for our customer. You know, our customer, if a piece of casino equipment, especially the electronic equipment, is down, they're not earning any money. Casinos in the UK, I don't know whether people go there, but, you know, Las Vegas might have a 1,000 slot machines in one casino. In the UK, you'll have 20. So one of them's, one of them's down, it's 5% of your slot revenue. So they want that back up and running as fast as they possibly can. Um, efficient customer service and feedback. We've built in a customer satisfaction survey, only three questions about our responsiveness. And it was interesting uh, about Net Promoter Score before because our customer satisfaction is based around Net Promoter. Would you recommend us? Would you, you, know, would you buy our services again? Were we responsive? Uh, are the three questions that we asked. So we have a customer satisfaction survey built in. Um, and obviously, a combination of everything, it's improved our engineer efficiencies. Any questions? No? Okay. Well, thanks a lot. Thank you.